running the Port Planning Modernization Workshop, which I've run <coughs> uh, mainly in southern England across uh, various academic and research institutions. <coughs> this is a collaboration with some uh, colleagues of mine from <coughs> Cambridge University as well as Durham University. <coughs> so the overview of the workshop <coughs> is to teach uh, modern port plan <coughs> uh, tools and libraries that may be used within computational science. <coughs> so it's a very computational science focused workshop. We don't <coughs> deal with software engineering or writing codes for any other disciplines. So <coughs> we cover a lot of the concepts and the theory followed by practical hands-on exercise uh, session. So I'm supposed to complete the sentence there. <coughs> so we cover the uh, software development workflow, which I think most people are very familiar with. So <coughs> you start off with some scientific area that you're interested in, you design your code, you implement your code, <coughs> you uh, do it, <coughs> get commit and get pushed to um, push your changes to your code, you <coughs> automate it, uh, automate the build, then you do the acceptance unit and acceptance testing, you release it and you interact with the user community to make sure that they're <coughs> that people can use your code to support their research. <coughs> but the other <coughs> workflow which uh, might not be uh, that familiar with is uh, the computational science workflow. So <coughs> at point one you have a natural phenomenon that uh, a computational science is interested in. So that could be, for example, weather, modeling the weather. <coughs> and they develop an idealized model which the applied <coughs> scientists develop which is then discretized in point three <coughs> by a numerical analyst <coughs> and that is implemented in a computer program and for this workshop obviously we're focusing on the port plan language <coughs> that gets executed on a HPC cluster which is point five and that generates lots of data <coughs> uh, which is point six and that's covered by uh, NetCDF and HDF5 <coughs> the data <coughs> is visualized <coughs> and the library that we uh, Covering the workshop is PO plot, and this, which is a method of in situ visualization. And hopefully, from the visualization, <coughs> academic research can uh, publish a, a paper. So, we cover <coughs> both, uh, both workflows so, the software development workflow, <coughs> and we uh, use we cover a lot of the Fortran verification tools for, for this workflow, and then <coughs> the uh, data management and visualization library. So we've, we've gathered uh, quite a bit of data, so I'd like to just point to the bar chart on the left-hand side. <coughs> so what this is showing you is the various standards of Fortran that have been released over the years and which versions of the Fortran language people are using. <coughs> As you can see, there's uh, quite a few people still using Fortran 77, a couple of people are using Fortran 66. And <coughs> and it goes down to 95, 2003, 2008. So <clears throat> what, from looking at this graph, we knew exactly what we wanted to do. Which is to reduce people, encourage people to use Fortran to <coughs> less, and for people to adopt the more modern versions of the Fortran. So that was our, one of our objectives <coughs> of the workshop, and we, um, that's what we tried to do. And there's some pie charts <coughs> on the right hand side, so we surveyed uh, the attendees, to see how many people use unit testing frameworks. I think that's 90% plus of Fortran programmers do not use any unit testing frameworks, which is, <coughs> I think, quite worrying. And we asked people if they're using any in-situ visualization libraries. Again, <coughs> the answer is 93% plus is, uh, are not using in-situ visualization. And the benefits of using in-situ visualization is that <coughs> as people are running their simulation, they can they can see the output of their simulation. So <clears throat> if they know the solution is incorrect within the first five minutes, they can just kill the job rather than wait three, four days to see that the solution is completely wrong. Obviously they get the answer quicker, and also they save a lot of CPU cycles and energy. <clears throat> I also asked how many people are using software engineering techniques. The answer was 75% uh, plus are not, again, which is a concern for us. And <clears throat> The majority of uh, Fortran developers do use some form of version control, which is obviously good. Um, <coughs> so these are the things that we wanted to uh, <coughs> address. Um, and uh, after
after the workshop, we sent a uh, feedback questionnaire asking people, what is it, which other technologies do you want to use now that you've attended the workshop? So we asked people if they want to use software engineering, more than Fortran, the CDF, and the various other technologies. So <clears throat> my um, view is that ultimately the impact of, of the Fortran workshop will depend on whether people will use the technologies. <clears throat> and that's a difficult thing, as a lot of people mentioned this morning. <clears throat> And we might follow up on uh, questionnaires uh, and contact people because we have their emails on whether they're using the technologies that they said they're going to use, as well as the concepts and the techniques. <clears throat> so um, computational scientists, they need to be support for the entire computational science workflow. It's not just covering the, the language, whether it's Fortran, C or C++. <clears throat> it's, the, it's the various tools, libraries <clears throat> that are needed within uh, the computational science workflow. So that's